um, because it isn't all doom and gloom. You guys have a lot of work to do, but there have been some little bits of good things happening um, around. And um, the one thing is that is, is kind of could be developing. It's not necessarily a new highs of event, but I think it, it, it could really be a good thing. As we're talking about starting up um, radio, um, UHI radio, oh, and yeah. we're trying to get students involved and students led. Um, so it's not this, it's very beginning work. It's just a different MFR, which is my local radio station here. So I think that could be something very good for, for UHI and the Perfect, thank you. Thanks. To be engaged in that activity. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, not trying it's all to, to toot my own horn because it's not me that's, that's doing it, it's just an area that club societies are starting to, to take off and take flourish and grow and develop. And I've gotten Breezy is amongst us, and she, I know she's she's done a little presentation. We have Sam there. Sam, so each tweet dialing as soon as possible. Sam is going to, Sam and Felix, I want to show Sam, Sam and Felix, they're from UHI Palace Works. They couldn't be with us throughout the, the whole week, but they're going to, they have a little 10 minute presentation about um, what's, what's, um, what the good news about their club that's going on. And I think the, the you know, John showed us earlier about the potential of getting people involved. Um, that is positive, that is encouraging, that does engage. We don't like that video. The video is more like that, would engage more students, I think, as well. So it's not all doom and gloom. So um, I think, Breezy, are you quite happy to, yeah, I did, you know how to, I can get my glamorous assistant, glamorous assistant, come and help Breezy. Um, introduce yourself, Breezy. Well, I, I don't think you yeah. are, but in this role, why are you okay. here? For the camera. For the camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to record him. I was given a mess of things to say when I was in the presentation. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's given a list of things to say, so I better have it out so that I'm actually reading what I'm saying. Um, I'm the secretary for the UHI Archaeology Society. Uh, we have been working, this is our original group, this is what we started out as two years ago, group of like minded students and my dog. Uh, we were going to trips, organising them on our own backs, going around trying to help ourselves when we were studying to see the local sites, meeting up with local archaeologists and historians. Sometimes doing the research up our own back when we were going to a site so that we kind of had a rough idea of what we were actually looking at. Um, and then it was suggested to us by our PAP that we become affiliated with the society. Originally it was quite a selfish reason that it was because we wanted these trips funded. Um, but we were going to become UHI LCC Archaeology Society. But of course that couldn't happen, so we became UHI Archaeology Society and took on much more than we ever thought we were going to. Christmas. Just a series of pictures. This is our um, annual trip, which was really, really wet. We went to Lewis for a few days last summer. Um, there were mainly students from LCC, but we also had a couple of girls come over from Murray. And we joined Becky, who's a lecturer down in Bembecula. She came up to Lewis to show us these sites, which are really, really epic, um, and gave us a little tour for those who have the of the wind. Um, we've now become a society of over 100 members and we've been affiliated for only a year. Well, not quite a year now, I think January we became affiliated, um, which is quite exciting. Um, we've been working not just with ourselves and the university, we've also been working with other projects now. This is again photos from the US, but uh, we've been working with a team called Sharp, which are from the University of St Andrews. And Sharp is Scotland's Coastal Heritage of Risk Project. Um, and they do both digs and uh, surveying work. And we've been taken on by them for six to eight months to look at the high risk sites on the Isle of Lewis um, and to have a look of just a monitor. We, go, we just do one trip a month. So we go out to a site or to an area of sites once a month. We go and look at these sites. I was really lucky that last May I was in Last May, no. Not that it's the Easter before, I was involved down in Lewis with a dig, as opposed to a ball of us with a dig. Um, we then got, so I was really lucky to be able to go down and come up without me, but I got a dig and it was on a beach, which kept bloody. Um, this is my most recent trip, and then what that is from the Rock of Fathers, which is a, was my first ever trip as well, um, two years ago, from a prehistoric burial site. So it's not just from one age, it's from several different eras, and there's even more than a graveyard there too now. So it's just a really interesting site. 
um, but it's also very much at risk from uh, rabbits and also from the sea giants and checking back in. And then in the summer, we can be able to find sites which are on the ground when it's a bit like a jungle. So the top right photo is um, a bit of a joke in action, ended up doing a report for the site because they could not find it. Um, we've taken on, highly suggested to us, that we became one society with sister groups across the college, oh, across the EHI. We have seven sister groups with us now, so we have one committee, which is me, um, Jan Skelly, who is our president, and she's an archaeology student, part-time. Uh, we have the vice president, is Rosie Townsend, who is an engineering student, who has joined us. And we have the treasurer, Sina, who is also an archaeology student. And we're all in the Well... It wasn't meant to happen. It was more of a, that's who got nominated, and, and we got voted to stay on. Um, and we've now got the seven sister groups across uh, sort of Murray, Inverness, um, I'm trying to think of other colleges, HTC, NHC, we're doing really well, much better than we ever thought we would. Each college is come forward with a representative, so they report straight back to us, but it's their job to get everyone ready in their colleges to go out on site trips. Um, and also we're trying to work with Sharp to push them out using the other colleges to go out and do the um, survey sites in their local area. Um, the origin of our society. We um, were really, really lucky with our Facebook group page. Um, this just has completely taken off and worked much better than we ever thought it would. All of our members are regularly posting up stuff they found on the internet, on news stories, that they've been told about in class and in discussions. We even put started, started putting our minutes up onto it, and people were commenting on our minutes, congratulating us on them, but also discussing the points which had happened in the meetings. The same as our constitutions on Facebook. So we had um, an email came to us from one of our members saying, what happened at the last meeting? regarding the constitution, like all the changes have happened, but you've got to see the whole constitution, it's on Facebook. So then he changed his conversation to there, so I was asking us questions through the media of Facebook so everyone could see, and everyone was then thinking, oh, actually, I actually haven't even thought about the constitution. So we're getting more and more people to see our constitution, which actually a lot of people don't like looking at. It's generally a very boring piece of work. Um, we also have, just a the news we have, we've got, um, Presentation screens, so just TV screens all around the colleges that you've got, all around the rooms with um, adverts going through. And we've got an advert up there now, which is advertising our trips once a month. We put up, so we have got our trips up to January up on that, um, where we meet, what time we go out, what time we get back. Um, our Facebook page, the people who get in touch with us. And we've actually started having more and more members come forward like that now, which is quite exciting too, to have more members who aren't part of the archaeology um, department at the college, but are also just engineering students, and it's, it's an exciting change. We've also um, been really, really grateful to the lecturers, who we would send out an email to one of the lecturers and go, could you please share this to all archaeology students, because we're having a general meeting and we'd like as many people to come. So they go, yeah, that's fine, and send it out. And then every so often they have to send out an update like that for us, which we are very, very grateful for. Uh, is there anyone have any other questions or anything? Yes, can you? Yeah, that was amazing. You were having the students as members, you know, it's not It's not only students. We have members can be students or just friends of the university. They can so we manage I think we've got something like fifty students and fifty non students. Um, they're also getting staff um, at the colleges who are joining in as well now, which is really good. I think, you know, that's so went back to my mind to what Esther said earlier on, you know, it's something like she's students, so it's you know, going to be. So you've obviously made that very open that inclusive. Yeah, well, one of the big things we found with the people who were coming out on our trips is that they didn't really think they had an interest in archaeology. But when they were, they suddenly realised we were going out to, say, Gary and Hein, which a lot of people live there, drive through there to get down to other villages. And I'm like, oh, I'm very much going home. I've always wanted to know about it. It's right in the middle of the Cavendish Jones complex. And we're discovering we went out of a local amateur archaeologist. And they were just interested to find out about the local history, but could see the evidence in the land. It was just brilliant to be able to see people smiling out in the rain. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
Yes, um, if I give you my card, could you remember me and we could uh, make sure that I could talk about it a little bit? Yes, that's brilliant, thank you. Um, I think I was talking to Jenny earlier. Um, it's charity shindle, I think, is the right term to throw in the nest. But, yeah, definitely a good thing to write Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, sorry, Breezy, can I just ask? Yeah. Sorry, that's okay. And um, one of the things I was speaking about earlier on about the Mexican club is that we're struggling to get connection with other companies. But you've been very successful. Can you tell me what your secret is? <laughs> <laughs> right, no, 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 we just had a big general meeting. We had a slight problem at the beginning when we became affiliated that um, we discovered after we affiliated that Orkney were trying to do exactly the same thing with us. Um, and then we found out that it, just, it wasn't working well between us. So we kind of figured out that if we opened it up in September, fresh start, new town, that if anyone could stand in, it would make it much more um, jointed. And we would be able to, yeah, the whole point of it for us was the trips and like but well, we don't want to have to organize everyone's monthly trips for them so we came up with the idea of the sister colleges to be able to, or the sister groups to be able to do that um and it just started off that we said can everyone please suggest a representative for your college if you would like to be involved um and just being able to find someone who would really like to have someone who's that passionate about it in every single college yeah so it's not like they were established associations or groups or whatever it was one individual who was able to take that yeah that was it. We just had one individual who was happy to become sort of the person that we communicated with, yeah. and then they and their friends, they wouldn't have to be a formal group, they wouldn't have to have a membership list like, oh, in so and so's group, and in the next they've got this person, this person, and this person. It was just the one person we had to contact so that they could keep us up to date with what they were doing yeah. in their area. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the vision kind of I've had for, for Club Society because hand UHI events logistically. Don't work, and I think we all know that. So exactly what? Thank you, Breezy, for taking my suggestion. <laughs> it happens sometimes, um, and I've done it's exactly what I hope every club. I would love to see the mature student society take the same approach as NUL and any um, anybody else. So thank you, Breezy, for for that. That's the best thing. Um, and well done, and then you can change it. <laughs> Hi, Sam and Felix. Thank you for the meeting. Are we, am I, can they hear me? Yeah, they can hear yeah, you. Cool. We should be able to hear you. Um, so I have, um, you can see, there are a lot of things. So you can look at that. They have their display. Sam and Felix from, um, where are you from? So you're from <laughs> Club from Sam. So some of you might be familiar with Sam and Felix. I want to introduce you. I think you can introduce yourselves. And uh, thanks for coming. Hi there. Um, my name is Samuel Black. Hello. 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 Hi, hi. Um, my name is Samuel Black. I'm uh, the president of the UHI Sabato Club. Uh, Felix and I here are calling from not so sunny Svalbard in the Arctic. Um, so the sun went down about an hour and a half ago, um, and yeah, we've not we've not been doing a lot of diving um, recently. But we're here to talk about uh, the things that are the positive things that have been going on in the UHI Sabato Club. Um, and Felix will introduce himself and then talk a little bit about what we do as a club. So, I, I'm Felix, and as Sam, I'm currently spending a semester here in Svalbard. This is an Erasmus term, and therefore we can't be as active in the club as we want to be. But um, especially last year, we have made huge progress with the UHI Sabakra Club. This, this, specifically at SAMS, the Scottish Association for Marine Science, where we both study, and because of the nature of the subject we're studying, there's always been a, a group of divers there, and with them, we sort of try to do weekly dives, and I have been doing so for, for about two years, some of, with some of the professor, PhD students and master students, as well as my, my friends and colleagues in the undergrad course there. And after about half a year to a year, we figured that we want to form uh, a club at SAMS and with UHI to sort of promote scuba diving further among students. And setting up the club sorting out everything took us probably about a year so from this 
from sort of March of 2015 to, to March of 2014, um, which is when we finally got our affiliation with UISA done and a funding bid in as well. Want to take it from there? Sure. So we received our, the confirmation of our funding bid around the 27th of May 2013. 14, sorry. And then um, since then, a lot has been going on, as Felix said. We had a very successful uh, club diving trip where we took four divers to East Lothian in Scotland and we did a lot of diving around St. Abbs and Dunbar area, um, which was very successful. Um, and then we came back, and in the summer, Felix and I worked quite hard collecting various parts of equipment, servicing equipment. Um, we managed to get hold of an old oxygen kit, which is a key, a key unit um, to ensure safe diving practices. Um, we also managed to secure a room within Sam's, but the Sam's building itself, and we managed to eventually now establish a club room for all our dive gear. Um, Felix and I then left to come to Svalbard in August, and we had a board meeting in the summer to try and ensure that the handover process went as smoothly as possible. Um, and the news that we've been getting recently is that things are running very smoothly in the new semester with the new first years. There was a significant amount of in, uh, interest in the club, um, currently in the process of signing between 15 and 20 members. Um, these members are, they have a range of diving abilities um, and some of them are just interested in joining and learning a bit more. Some of them might be more, more interested in snorkeling and uh, yeah, some of them are interested to, to get into the water and diving. So as a kind of young club, we are, we're aiming to collect a, a number of equipment sets and work on those, well, work with the, the members of the club and achieve what they, what they would like. Um, there's a good number of active dive club members at the moment. Uh, they're meeting weekly to, to discuss dives, and I presume, and yeah, I think they're meeting, they're diving weekly, so uh, yeah, it's all very positive. Uh, Felix has a few photos that we can show you. Unfortunately, I've not been able to connect my, my presentation here right into the VC. So do you see, do you see the PowerPoint? Yeah. 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 Well enough. Yeah. Should we switch off the lights? Yes. Right. So these are predominantly photos from, from last year that um, we took on club dives as well as private dives. This this here. Ooh, oh, this here is actually an article that got published in, in Scuba by the other local diving club in Oban, with who I did some diving, um, on Oban's flying boats. So those, those are our Second World War wrecks that sunk between 1941 and 1944. And we managed to find a few of those, and actually were the first people to dive with them, and both, both Sam and I were lucky enough, as well as one of the professors who's a member in the UHI Diving Club, and um, we've been lucky enough to, to join other divers on these ventures and had uh, some really great diving experiences. We do, as, as we said, try to organise about weekly club dives, and uh, we can get to see some amazing wildlife. Um, from anemones to scallops, as well as just jellyfish and fish. Um, and really, Scotland's, Scotland's underwater landscape is probably the most beautiful in Europe and one of the most beautiful cold water diving areas in the world. Um, I so far really thoroughly enjoyed diving in various locations around Scotland, including other places where there is huge eye colleges like Orkney um, and I think this is one of the huge potential for, for students uh, in UHI. We've got some amazing underwater wildlife 
all around Scotland. And I think the fact that we have so many different colleges and partners around the Scottish Highlands and Islands will definitely be a great advantage, especially once this club has been established slightly better and we can then try to expand and have maybe several um, little branches of the club all around UHI. So far our diving has obviously been limited more to the open area where there is great diving and if any one of you wants to join the club and come to visit us and join us on some diving, we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, there's, there's great facilities in Oban at the moment, especially through the National Facility of Scientific Diving, but also through several dive centres um, that are in the Oban area. Um, so if you're interested in that, please get in touch. So yeah. Yeah, as a club we aim to, uh, first of all, establish kind of a routine diving practice at our local university, uh, SAMS. Um, we hope to get, we hope to kind of increase the number of divers weekly. Um, unfortunately, we can't provide training at the moment, um, but that might be potentially something in the future. Um, additionally, we would try and like, we would like to incorporate or get other students from other campuses in the UHI involved. Um, it's quite difficult as all our facilities are based at SAMS, however, it is something that we have talked about um, and we look to make a priority in the, in the next semester of study uh, in the UHI calendar. Um, so that's all from us. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yep, at the back. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm John. Um, from uh, West Island College, just up the road from Sands. Oh, yeah. uh, we've got we've got a chap in our uh, college called Kenor. I'm just wondering if you've actually spoken to him, or if he's, he contacted you guys. I know Sam, are you part of this, the mountain biking club as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you may know King through association of some of the guys from there. Uh, I don't yeah. know if King's actually contacted you, but I'm just wondering on his behalf, how would he contact you? Because he's a very keen diver and he, he does his, um, uh, I'm trying to, is it Paddy? Okay. Yeah, so he's done, he's done, I think he's done level one or two there. Yeah. So he's, he's keen to, to meet, you, meet up with you guys at some point. Uh, how does he go about it? You know? Okay. So we do have um, this uisac.wordpress.com that is a blog um, where there is a contact email address or even, even a contact form that you can fill in online. Uh, and we will receive these emails. So this is probably one of the prime pathways. Additionally, there is a Facebook group. So if you um, if you hit in Sam's UHI Subaqua Club into Facebook, you we should come up, and you can contact us through that. That's probably even the best the best thing to do because okay. we will check this most regularly. Um, and especially with West Highland. We've been talking about this because one of one of the most interesting locks to to dive at on the west coast of um, Scotland would actually be at Balakulich, and that's sort of halfway between Oban and, and Port William. So we we have actively talked about that, and there's a few uh, divers in our club who are quite keen to do that, and it, it would be sort of the opportunity to to meet halfway and and do some diving there. That's great, yeah. Um, if some of our students come along and have never been diving before, is there an opportunity for them to join in as well? Is there any sort of is gear that we need for that, or is there something you need that you could provide? Okay, well, in our first year, we prioritised equipment um, that was, again, it was scuba equipment. Um, we discussed um, that wetsuits and snorkels are all personal kit um, and unfortunately at our early stage we can't provide things like wetsuits and boots and gloves however it is something that many people have um, we are currently working on I guess we would like to try and get some sort of taster session our social secretary is working on a leaflet 
at the moment, which we would hopefully circulate around some of the other UHI campuses next semester. Um, but again, we'll need to discuss how to how to you know kind of incorporate beginners, um, because as I say, we can't provide training, and you know we can't have not uh, beginners straight into the water scuba diving. So uh, is a is something we will need to discuss. Hello, everyone. Um, our social secretary in particular and our membership secretary have been able to take beginners snorkeling. So that is an option, especially if there is, is sort of a suited wetsuit around that a beginner could borrow or happens to have one from, from a trip south to, to Spain or, or something like that. So yes, there is there's options to get into the water, but because scuba diving gear um, is quite difficult to handle and also can be quite dangerous if you don't have proper training, um, as Sam said, that's unfortunately not possible. Yeah. That clears it all up, thank you. Right. Any other questions? Anybody else? Right, we appreciate you coming from afar to, to be with us, and uh, sorry for the, the lateness, uh, but we do appreciate it, and uh, I'll be in touch with you guys soon. Sure. Okay. okay. We'll keep in touch. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.